Hi, it's probably Sharon. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over a really simple and basic activity together to use up some of your extra book pages. All you really will need is a little bit of gesso, acrylic paint, maybe some ink, and that's all you really need to get started. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm excited to get going. First of all, grab some of your extra book pages and some gesso. It can be clear gesso or white gesso. Um, if you don't have gesso, uh, you can also use acrylic paint. Um, it should have about the same results at the end, but that's just an option. If you don't have gesso, go ahead and grab some uh, white acrylic paint or really any color that you want to work with will be fine. So I'm going to grab my book page and a piece of foil. I'm just going to crunch it up. If you don't have foil, you can use um, a scrunched up piece of paper or scrunched up piece of a plastic bag or something like that. That would be just fine. Um, we're just trying to get designs in the gesso. So I'm, I have clear gesso here. And I'm just going to take my foil, my ball of foil, and just kind of dab it in the gesso, and then I'm going to put it on the page. So it doesn't have to cover it. It just, just some blobs here and there. I'm going to set that aside to dry. I'm going to grab another book page and this time I'm going to use white gesso. We'll just see these different effects when we get later on in this video. Um, you'll see why I'm using different colors and stuff. Actually I'm going to put a little bit more there. Okay, so I'm using the same, I, it doesn't bother me that it has clear gesso on it um, from the previous page, but so we're just going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to kind of twist as I'm putting it on, kind of like twisting pattern. Excuse my sniffles. And yeah, try not to get it too thick. Because, of course, the thicker it is, the longer we will have to wait for it to dry. So we're just kind of making a pattern with the aluminum foil and the gesso. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry as well. Now I think I'm going to use um, some acrylic paint kind of mixed in with this white gesso that we have. Good gravy, about time. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just gonna dip it in, dip the foil in the, and it's just a mixture of the white and, or the white gesso and the blue acrylic paint. So I do, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have spaces um, where you can see the, the words from the book page. So I don't want to cover it all up, okay? There, that's good. As you can see, I, it seems like I like the swirling motion. Just so I'm not wasting the rest of the gesso and paint mixture there, I'm going to just put the rest of it on another book page. Um, I want to do it in a different way though. Maybe I'll do kind of like a stroking pattern. And 
And like I mentioned before, I'm trying to leave um, spaces where I can see the words through the paint. While we're waiting for those to dry a little bit, um, I'm going to show you something else. This is just a book page that I covered with clear gesso and it's already dry. Um, something else that we can do with book pages is use watercolors or watercolor pencils. And you don't even have to be an artist to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and draw some lines. Um, this will be like my petals. I'm no Picasso, but anybody can do this type of watercoloring. You don't need any skill. If you can just draw a simple flower shape. Then I'm going to put brown in the middle for the, the center of the flower. I'm just going to make a little circle there. And then I'm going to go in with a paintbrush and a little bit of water. Let's see. So it's pretty easy. You can use regular watercolors too. Putting the gesso on top of the book page helps, um, it just makes it easier to try to use watercolors on top of it. You can still do watercolors without putting gesso first, but um, it just has a different effect. I'm going to put a little something there. Get some idea of a stem anyway. Okay, we'll let that dry for a minute. Okay, while I was letting that dry, I was reading the page, and it's a little inappropriate for close-ups later on. So I'm actually going to do... It's very important to read what is on the page, because you never know. Okay, we'll carry on. This, this one is covered with white gesso. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a pink one this time, quickly. Yep, it's so important when you are making a journal, whether it's, well, for yourself, I guess it wouldn't matter so much, but if you're making it for someone else, be very careful to what is on the pages um, if you're using book pages. Sometimes you can be caught off guard with what you see. You don't want to surprise anybody that way, so... Okay, it's um, drying. It's not all the way dry, but I think it'll be okay to go in and add a little more darker colors. So you can see, I was mentioning before how um, it looks different if you just paint with watercolor straight on the page without putting gesso down first. And you can see here where the gesso uh, ended, how it kind of makes the paper wet underneath here and here, where the other is just kind of setting on top of the gesso. Okay, you get the idea. Um, it's kind of fun to play around with. Anyway. We'll put this one aside for now. I went ahead and did some smaller ones off camera on top of book page. Um, some have white gesso, some have clear gesso, but maybe we can use these later on when we're making our stuff for our journals. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the first one, the first paper we did, or the first book page we did that had the clear gesso over the top. Um, so if you're following along with me, you also will want to grab some extra uh, paper 
or extra book pages that are just plain um, because we might have some extra ink to soak up. So it's helpful to have some of those ready. I'm going to use um, some Distress ink. I think I will use brown. This is Vintage Photo and Tattered Rose. So what I'm going to do is move this aside a little bit and I'm just going to drip not much, just a couple drops on this uh, parchment paper. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water. There's always extra ink on the paper when I do this. That's why I always like to have a spare paper or two to soak it up so I don't waste it. Um, I'm going to stir that up a little bit. I mean, there's many different ways you can do this. Um, this is just what I'm going with right now. So then I'm going to turn my paper. So this is the gesso side. I'm just going to turn it upside down and just kind of pat it on top of the ink and water mixture. And you'll see it's kind of drippy and I don't see any pink or brown differences. It all looks like the same color. Um, you might be off camera a little bit. I'm just going to take another page and put it on top of that paper just to soak up any extra. Just kind of pat it down. So that's what we're left with. The paper's kind of damp now. So I'm going to set that aside to dry and try to soak up more of this ink. on my extra book pages. It's okay if we leave a little bit there for the next page. I do want to use different colors. Um, since I didn't see any pink on that one, I mostly just saw the brown, I think I'm just gonna go with pink on the next one um, without adding any brown. It's a uh, tattered rose. That's the color. And I'll just add a little bit of water. Just kind of move that around, spread it out a bit. And now I'm taking the second paper we did. So this had the white gesso and we did kind of the twirling or spinning motion with the uh, and we went in foil, wadded up. So I'm just going to do the same, turn it upside down and try to soak up some of this ink that we have on the parchment paper. So I can at least see the pink that time. It's kind of a pinkish peach color. And what's really cool is where the uh, gesso wasn't where it just goes right to the page you can you can definitely tell because it's dark where it's wet that's going right to the page the other the lighter is sitting on top of the gesso so when this is all dry it's going to have kind of a cool effect and next we have the one that we did the blue acrylic paint and it had a little bit of white gesso mixed in there. So on this one I'm going to do vintage photo ink. Hopefully adding this water will um, dilute the ink enough so it's not super dark. Okay, same thing. I'm going to turn this upside down onto the ink. So 
see how that looks. I'm going to get another piece of book page to sop up what's left. Actually, let me try to get around the edges a little more. As you probably can guess, we can use these pages that were soaking up the extra ink. That actually, some paint came up too, which looks kind of awesome. Anyway, we can use these book pages later for other projects. So you just kind of keep these in a stack to the side and their day will come when they will be used for scrapbooking or junk journal making. So that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. All right, so we're gonna set these aside to dry. Sorry, I'm just admiring this and this does look so cool. Anyway, I just had to give it a little bit of, a little more attention to the camera here. It's really pretty, I love it. Right, I was forgetting one. So this one we did, we tried to use up the rest of the paint. Let's hurry and do this one too. I'm going to just use, I think, Tattered Rose. And when these dry, of course, they're going to look a bit different, but uh, it looks pretty cool for now. Hopefully it will dry a, a more of a pink color. I'm starting to wonder now if the one that I thought was mostly brown and the brown overtook the pink, I'm wondering if it will dry more of a pink um, because this actually looks like it's brown as well. So. All right, another book page to sop up that extra. And we'll set this one aside to dry as well. We're back with our first example. Um, this is the one that we put the clear gesso on and just kind of um, dabbed it or whatever. Um, and I mean, I can feel the gesso on it, but just by looking at it, it just looks like a regular book page. Um, what I want to do with this is I'm going to make a simple tag out of it. I don't want to cover up the text too much because I want, you know, I want to be able to see the book page. So I'm going to cut this down to about four inches wide by about six and a half inches tall. And then I'm also going to cut down, uh, I just have some recycled stuff. <laughs> I'm going to try to recycle this and use it on the back of my tag so that we will have some extra uh, nice writing space on the back. So I will go ahead and cut these both down. So I'm, I don't want to really use the margins. So I'm just going to try to keep my tag using the middle portion of the page. And I'll do the same with the packaging. I'll cut that down to the same size. My packaging wasn't quite six and a half inches, so I'll have to cut a little bit off of the book page. So we have about six and a quarter. Sorry if you're off camera, I'm trying to keep it centered as much as I can. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to glue this onto the cardboard. I'm just using Elmer's glue or PVA glue. I'm actually just going to tack it a little bit because I'm going to end up sewing around the edges later on. So I just want to put a little bit of glue here just to tack it down. I'm 
so we'll let this uh, sit for a minute. Actually, let's cut, because we're going to make a tag out of it, so let's cut the corners real quick. Right, I lost my scissors. I had to go searching for them. Okay, so I'm just, I don't have a template or anything, so I'm just going to cut one corner and then take the piece from that corner, flip it around, and put it on the opposite side so that our tag is symmetrical on both sides. So this is how we, um, this is what we have so far. As you can see, it's poking out over the side a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and sew around the edges and I will be right back. Okay, so that's finished. I left the little strings here for now. I might want to cut them off later, but um, I just left them for now. I'm going to go ahead and trim up all of the edges to make sure that they are even with each other. here okay that looks great okay so now we want to decorate this up a little bit um, I think I'm just gonna do something simple okay I grabbed some distressed oxide I've got green well rustic wilderness and Victorian velvet so I'm gonna use those and I think I'm just going to use some polka dots. Let's do the polka dots with the green. I don't want the whole thing, so I'm just doing a little piece of the stamp. And I'm just going to put that down here, kind of at the corner. It doesn't show up very dark. Let's let's put a little more just because it's not showing up very dark. This way we still can see the the book page and see the words. I want to cover them up too much. Okay. Then I'm going to do a little butterfly up here. And I'm using the Victorian velvet for this one. Okay, that's not showing up too dark either. You know what? I'm going to try and this might be a fail, but they're both oxides, so I'm going to spritz them with water and see if that makes it any better. Well, it made the green darker. Okay. I think that'll be all right. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do with this one, it does look kind of plain, um, but I didn't really do this video today to decorate the tags too much. It's more of how to make the book pages look cool to make tags out of. So I don't want to spend a lot of time decorating it. Um, uh, I'll do. I'll show the finished product at the end. I'm going to probably put a, a ribbon or some lace or something up here but for now let's just move on to the next one which was the white gesso with and it had the pink uh, ink underneath or on top of it so I really like the way this turned out it kind of looks like roses to me it looks like white roses um, I again I really like the way this turned out um, 
for this one, I was thinking of making a tag booklet. So I'm going to cut it down to about the same size as we did the other one, about a six and a half ish by four. And I will cut that down now. My knife or my blade is a little bit wet from that last thing, but that's okay. Okay, so we have four by, what did I do? Six and a half. Four by six and a half. Now what I'm going to do is get some um, cardstock that I have dyed with avocado. And we'll make the cover of the little tag booklet out of that. Okay, here is my dyed card cardstock. So I'm going to cut it down. So this is four inches wide, so I want to do eight inches by six and a half inches. Okay, now we'll just fold this in half. Line up those edges. Okay, now our book page should fit on there just perfectly. So I'm just going to tack it down with a little bit of glue like we did on the last one. Just to get it to stay put. Um, I am going to sew around the edge of this one as well. However, I mean you don't need to. I just like that look so I'm going to go ahead and sew around it. If you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to sew around the edge, just make sure that you glue it down um, and try to squeeze, you know, so you don't have the lumps of the glue. Make sure that the glue is really flat. You know, you can use a card or something to kind of press the glue flat. Um, and make sure you get it, the glue clear to the edges if you're not going to be sewing it. Okay. Inside of this booklet, I'm going to use avocado dyed. Uh, it's just like copy paper. Um, sometimes I use notebook paper. It's a little bit thinner, um, but you'll get the lines going the wrong way sometimes. So today I'm going to use, and what's cool is it almost matches the ink perfectly. So that's really, that's a bonus, right? So. I'm going to cut these down. This is the same size as I did the cover. So I'm going to cut them down to eight inches by six and a half inches. Awesome. Okay. And again, fold them in half. Try to line them up really well. All right, so I have a few options. So the, here's the pages. Of course, this is not sewn, so ignore this gaping hole there. It's not sewn yet. So we have a few options. We can do we can sew uh, down the spine with a sewing machine. We can, if you have one of those staplers that can reach that far or the, the end of it turns, you can staple it. Um, or you can do like a pamphlet stitch with some thread and just sew, you know, stitch it that way with a needle and thread. Um, I am going to stitch this with the sewing machine just a little bit here on the spine. I'm not going to go all the way down. And then that will hold the pages in. But before I do that, I'm going to sew around uh, the cover. Then I will sew the pages in, just so you know, because I, I can't take you to the sewing machine with me because uh, I don't have anywhere to put the camera by the sewing machine right now. So before we do that, I need to cut it down to a tag shape. You don't have to, but I want to make this into a tag shape instead of a rectangle. So 
Again, I'm just going to go ahead and cut down I'm not going to do as much this time. So yeah, you want you'll want to cut it down before you go and sew it, obviously. That's hard to see, sorry. Kind of blends in. Okay, so there we have our tag shape. Okay, so I went and stitched around and then I stitched a little bit here in the middle to hold those pages in. Clip that off. Okay, so now we're going to want to decorate this up a little bit. Like I mentioned before, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time decorating because um, basically I just wanted to kind of show how to, how to do some different things with book pages. So. All right, now I think I'm just going to get some number stamps maybe and put down here. All right, so I've grabbed some Vintage Photo Distress ink, and that's what I'm going to use to put the numbers on. I just have, uh, I think I'm going to put 55. I have numbers on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to put 55 down here on the bottom. Actually, I have this little stack of paper I'm going to put under there just to help my stamp show up hopefully a little better. Looks great. One more. All right. Now, something a little extra. I'm going to use this uh, little cutout of a heart. I'm just going to place that up here somewhere. So it's going to take me a minute to apply the glue to all those little bits and pieces. So I think, let's see, I'll probably just speed up this part, right? Okay, we'll just place that down gently. make sure all the little bits are secured down to the paper. Okay, we'll set that aside for a minute to dry. Um, for the next one, uh, I really love the way this turned out. Um, I think I'm going to just make this into a, uh, the name escapes me index card type thing okay so I think I'm just gonna how, how wide is this it's almost six inches so I think I'm gonna do like maybe five and a half by four ish um, I'm just gonna make like an index card type thing out of this so I'm going to back it with some coffee dyed um, cardstock or actually I think I have an index card so I have an index card here. It's not going to fit exactly, but we can trim it off. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down like we did with our other projects. Um, let's see, do I want the stripes? I probably want the stripes on the outside, right? Just try to line that up to one end because we are going to have to trim off on at least two of the sides.
I went ahead and made a second one because the part that I used in the first place was missing a lot of text and this one had more text. So I actually ended up doing two of them. I went and sewed around the edges just using a straight stitch. Now I'm just going to trim it up so everything is lined up and nothing is peeking out. Okay, now we can go ahead and decorate these a little bit. Okay, so I've got a little butterfly cut out. Um, I have a punch that stamps this little butterfly. So I went ahead and punched that out. And I have some gold, like polish, I don't know what it's called, gold gilding wax. Um, I thought it might be fun to go around the edge of the butterfly. And I probably should, probably should have worn gloves, but I just want to go just around the edge of the butterfly. So it just gives a little bit of shimmer here on the edges. And then I've also got a little, uh, it's just a little piece of scrapbook paper that looks like denim. I'm just going to fold that in half and we're going to make a little tab for our little index card. It's going to ink around a little bit, so try to hide that white. We'll set our butterfly aside still a little wet so how I'm going to attach the tab I'm just going to staple it on um, I could go and sew it on there but I think I'm just gonna staple it on very carefully Just like that. Um, of course, if we want to hide the silver of the staple, I usually uh, paint them with a Sharpie before I put them in the stapler, but I must have not done that this time. So you can actually get a Sharpie and um, color that. I don't know if I'm going to want to do it at this point, though, because I'll end up painting the uh, scrapbook paper, and I don't want to do that. So. We can just let that add to the character of the index card. Uh, I want to stick this butterfly on. I was just going to stick the middle down so that the wings were popping up, but it might catch on something later. Actually, you know what, I'm going to do that anyway. Okay, we'll just pop that down. Get that time to dry. So that actually turned out pretty cute. Um, like I said, I'm trying not to embellish too much. Not, uh, just kind of want to let the book page be the main attraction, I guess you'd say. So since these are on the top, I try to put them at the bottom. Since these end up at the top this time, I'm going to just trim those off. That one turned out pretty cute though. So I don't know if any of you have noticed when you use these eyelets, the back can sometimes be sharp. So sometimes I get that glue, um, I can't remember the name of it, glossy accents I think, and I will put it 
just around there so that it's not so sharp, especially if little kids might be touching it. So there's a little tip for you. Um, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and put some lace or some ribbon. Let's see. It's probably too much, but that's okay. We can cut it back if it's too much. It's easier to cut it back than to not have enough, right? So I'm just going to poke it through the front, bring it around the back, and then take the little pieces from the front and pull it through. Um, since this one doesn't have an eyelet, you have to keep that in mind and be a little careful with it. Just like that. So you might want to add a little charm or something here. It looks kind of bare. And for this one, I'm going to use a piece of black ribbon. I think that'll tie in well with the text of the book page and the black heart and the stitching as well. It's kind of a fat ribbon to put through that tiny opening. Let's go ahead and poke that through. Something's definitely off. I've never had so much trouble putting on a ribbon. Oh, it just took a little, a little work, but it, it came through okay. Okay, so now I think we need to put something a little extra, at least on this one. It needs something. All right, I gathered up some cute little things that we can add to these tags. Um, I'm just using these bulb pins and I have this little flower. I'm going to add that to this big tag. So I'm just going to pop it on there and then just poke that pin through the ribbon. Have a cute little dangly heart. And then for this one, I am going to add, if I can get the pin open, I have this cute little gold heart. So I'm just going to put that right on there. And the same thing, I'm just going to poke it right through the ribbon or the lace. Now, on second thought, I should have put an eyelet on this one. It just looks so bare right there. But that, uh, that little heart dangle, I think, helps a little bit. I do think we should ink around the edges. I will add a little bit more to it. Sometimes it's hard to not go um, overboard decorating. I usually like to decorate a little bit more than this, but um, I just thought we'd keep it simple today, not get too crazy. Okay. So, quick little recap. Um, out of all of the book pages we start out with, we did color a lot more than I made tags with, but I figured, you know, one example of each was probably plenty. So we have our little tag booklet. Um, I mean, if you wanted to even go further, you could put a little pocket on the inside or on the back cover. Um, when I use these, I usually don't put them in a pocket. Most of the time I uh, clip them to the side of the page in the journal. Um, like I, I think I mentioned before, I, I make a lot of these little booklets when I do journals. Um, and then we have our tag that's just made with um, recycled cardboard in the book page. And then we have our index card. Hey guys, I kind of went off the rails and I kept creating more stuff and I 
thought this video is getting way too long, so I scaling it back, I went off camera and did um, a few uh, changes. I did some extra stuff. I, for example, I put this flower stamp on this card because it kept bothering me. I felt like it just needed something else. So I just got a dark blue ink and made a little flower there. So that's one change that I did. I finished the other index card. Um, I used a tab off of like a granola bar box. Um, the inside little flaps that come down. I just cut one of those off and I put gesso over, over the top and a couple stamps and just glued that on. And of course a little uh, butterfly here down in the corner. I drew, okay, so this is the paper that we did at the first of the video where I was um, getting the extra ink sopped up. So this is one of those papers. So it did come up with a little bit of the blue paint on it too, but this is what I did with it. I freehand drew a heart. Um, then I got this stuff. I don't know what it's called. Um, they have it at like Walmart. I think it's like for table runners or something. It's kind of plasticky and anyway, they have different colors. It's kind of fun. So I cut off a little bit of that and then I just straight stitch sewn that on to the book page then I took that and I glued it onto a cereal box sewed it around and then I you know of course cut the heart shape to follow the uh, book page so that's just something else you can pop in your journal and then I also did um, I'm sure you've seen these before it's just a little envelope made out of a book page where you take, just take your book page, let's see. You have to make sure that the font is going the right way. So basically it's just like that. Um, so just, you know, trim off the, the top of the page and the bottom margins if you want. Um, and then you would want to, if you want to sew it, you would start off by the inside flap, so this part. You would make a stitch along there, then fold it. Then again, you want to stitch from here all the way around the top and down again, and then just fold the top over and that's that. So um, I added a little ticket and a little rusty paper clip, which is kind of cute. And then I put uh, the watercolor flowers that we did. So. Um, I didn't really get too far with that, but here's one idea that you could use for those watercolor flowers. I just cut it out and inked around the edges. I put uh, white gesso on the back so it can be written on. So there's an idea for that anyway. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you staying until the end. Oh, you know what? One more thing. Um, I did this in another video, but here's another way that you can use book page. This is just another tag, but I've sewn on thin brown paper like you get in packaging and boxes with, that you get um, delivered. Um, so I just cut that out. I put book page, because both of those are thin paper. Um, and the reason I wanted it to be thin is because I have parchment paper in the middle of that. So I will, if you remember, I will link that video down because that's kind of fun. Anyway, guys, thanks for staying until the end, and please like and subscribe so that we can hang out for a while, and um, again, have a great day, and I will see you when I create my next video.